Hey there gang, Patrick King here, coming at you from Ruffin, North Carolina at Seven Springs Equestrian Center, home of Marie Pruden Horsemanship, here with my new good friend, Tacita Kulikowski. She is a, um, a bridal fitter and a rep, is that right? For That's PS right. of Sweden Bridles. She's been out here with us today, fitting a couple horses, teaching us about PS of Sweden Bridles, and even more than that, teaching us about what to look for when your bridle fits appropriately or when it doesn't. Thanks so much for coming out today to see that. Oh, it's my pleasure, definitely. Awesome, so uh, we got Janet to join us here, and can we talk a little bit uh, just about some of our ideas with bridal fit, some of the things we should be aware of? Sure, um, we'll start with the crown piece. One of the things that we want to be sure of is that we have a crown piece and a brow band that are appropriately sized, so we have the temporal mandibular joint here, or the TMJ joint. We want to make sure that we do not have buckles that are impinging into this area. And we also want to make sure that our brow band is large enough to accommodate the muscles of the ear base. Because if you think about it, if you have pressure behind your ears, that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And most horses are out there doing their jobs in a level of discomfort. Because of, their, because of their bridles. So when we can make sure that those pieces are appropriately fitted, um, then we can increase their level of comfort, which increases their performance. Gotcha, yep. Um, moving down here to the nose band, um, one important thing to take a look at here on Janet is how thin this top part of the nasal bone gets. It's very thin and very delicate. So when you're fitting a nose band, we want to make sure that we are putting it onto the thicker portion of the skull. And as you can see, this nose band is designed to swoop upwards to give more freedom of the teeth um, and also to avoid uh, putting pressure here on the cheekbone. And the way that this is spaced as well, you have nerves that exit here through the infraorbital foramen that go and control a lot of what's happening over here. And if you place pressure on those nerves as they're exiting the skull onto the surface tissue, you're going to have behavioral issues as a result of that. Mm. So things where you think that your horse is not responding appropriately could be because of discomfort here as well. Okay. So you can see how if we had a noseband too low or especially a hackamore too low that exerts pressure and leverage, how we're relying on a very, very thin piece of bone. This I could probably break with my fingers. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very delicate. We want to make sure that we're keeping that in an appropriate place there. The other thing is in terms of um, drop nose bands and flash nose bands, if you notice here, we have another exit point for nerve endings for the lower part of the jaw here. If this is too tight through here, we're going to have that same sort of situation as when it's too tight up here. Um, this can cause numbness, tingling, um, all the way up to feelings of almost like electric shock. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're not clamping down with a nose band so tight to where we are impacting those nerves. It needs to be there for gentle support and guidance, but not restriction. Gotcha. And so all of those feelings, the numbness, the tingling, the mm -hmm. that sort of thing, that's from pressure on the nerves themselves, yes. right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Definitely. And it looks like Janet needs a dental. Janet does need <laughs> a dental. She needs a dental to feel more comfortable and compliant. <laughs> Probably one of the most important things with bridal fit, as Definitely. it is with everything else, is the dental health of your Yes. Horse. And, you know, it's interesting to be able to look at this spacing here, too, because um, we have this entire range to be able to set a bit, um, but we want it to be equidistant from what would be the canines, which would be upper and lower here, mm -hmm. and the first molar. So ideally, you'll want to have your bit spacing right here. Um, one thing to pay attention to is how sharp the bars are. Yes. I'm sure that, that you've realized that as well. And there's no teeth here to protect those bars. Mm -hmm. So when we use a down and backward action with the hand, we're directly impacting those bars and putting pressure on the tongue. Um, all the more reason why we do things through those five classical rain holds. Absolutely. Um, it, this really starts to give you an idea of why the bit fitting and the way that you use the bit is so crucial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you talked about the bit sitting um, halfway between mm -hmm. the molar and where the K9 
canine would be. Of course, Janet is a mare. Most mares, not all, but most mares don't have canine teeth. Correct. And I've even seen some geldings that mm -hmm. don't have canine teeth. Um, canine tooth, of course, was a fighting tooth, but the mares, uh, even a horse that doesn't have them, they still have a little bit of a ridge there where that yeah. tooth would be. Um, so... I thought we were supposed to have wrinkles in their lips, right? <laughs> Isn't that the old pony club rule or the old 4-H rule that you adjust the bit that there's wrinkles in the lips? Now you're now you're changing things up on us. What's that about? Absolutely. Well, the corners of Janet's mouth could be very, very forward or they could be very long and elastic. Mm -hmm. um, and that would greatly impact what you're using as an outward parameter for where to, to situate the bit. Mm -hmm. um, and those things are really a good learning tool when you're seven or eight years old and you don't need to be sticking your fingers in a horse's mouth gotcha. um, and that's a good rule to go by for that state but now that we're older and more educated and able to make those appropriate changes mm -hmm. then yes it's best to to have a feel and figure out where all those pieces are. Gotcha. So when we talk about the difference in the lips, uh, we've all seen horses that have really tiny mouths, mm -hmm. basically. And of course, they still have the full mouth, yes. right? But it's the lip space, basically, mm -hmm. where the mouth opens versus the horse that maybe has something a little bit longer. Definitely. Gotcha. And there's also differences in um, thickness and texture of the lips as well. Mm -hmm. There's. Uh, I was doing some bridle fitting on a horse that was... Uh, a tongue lawler, we were able to get it resolved. But one of the things that we noted was that the horse tended to loll out only one side. And upon inspection of the inside of uh, his lips, the side that he lolls out of actually had a lot more lip tissue. And he was pushing the side of his lip away with his tongue gotcha. because it was getting caught. Um, so his lips themselves weren't Mm -hmm. They weren't even. Developed. They, weren't even. <laughs> they were asymmetrical. So little things like that can make a really big impact. Right, right. Okay, great. Yeah. So now something that I noticed too about these head stalls, mm -hmm. um, or the, brow, the, yeah, the head stalls, um, is that significantly wider. Yes. Okay, and I'm noticing as I rest this over Janet's head here, this would be sitting over a large bulk of uh, the atlas. Yes. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about that? What's important about that? Um, we want to redistribute pressure evenly as much as possible. Now, if you have a very thin piece of leather, that's going to concentrate into more pounds per square inch, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Same thing as if, you know, a lady steps on your foot with a stiletto versus, you know, the whole entire sole of the foot. It's I try to avoid that altogether. Just saying. <laughs> it's concentrating that pressure. Mm -hmm. So by having a much wider crown piece, we're able to redistribute that pressure over a broader area. So gotcha. horses that have sensitivity over their pole, or maybe they have um, some sort of abnormality in their pole, whether that be calcification or arthritis, um, this helps to alleviate that significantly. Gotcha. So we're talking bridle fit, similar mm -hmm. to how we might talk saddle fit then wider surface area mm -hmm. is better pressure distribution. Absolutely. Interesting. They go hand in hand. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, any other thoughts? Um, I think that we've covered most of the bases there. I would say that, you know, if you have any questions as to whether or not your bridle fits, contact a bridle fitter. We've got several people throughout the United States that, that offer bridle fitting. Um, and it is an eye-opening experience to be able to see how your horse reacts mm -hmm. um, and how we are able to get them comfortable and relaxed and compliant um, and to be able to feel the difference that a well-fitted bridle can make. Awesome. Cool. So if anybody out here is interested, how can they contact you directly? Um, you can go to my website, which is destinationconsensusequus.com. Um, or you can find me on Facebook. My name is very unusual, so we can probably put that in there in the... <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> can, can make sure to include yes, that in the notes. You can put me in there, <laughs> and then I can put people in touch with um, where their closest bridal fitter is as well. So if it's not me, um, then we can certainly get them in touch with somebody who would be best suited to help them. Awesome. Cool. Thank Good you deal. so much. All right, gang. Tosita Kulikowski with PS of Sweden Bridals. Thanks so much. Thank you.